Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make some pieces that I made the other day um, but for the life of me I couldn't think of a decent name for them so I posted them in my group on Facebook and whoever came up with the best name would win some of those pieces. Congratulations to Mindy Wells who came up with the name Vintage Brocade um, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So um, I'm starting off with this translucent clay. It's Primo White translucent, but you can use any translucent. They're all rolled out onto a number three, and I've cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equal squares, and I used a one and a half inch cutter. You don't have to use that size. You can do as big as you want. Um, so they're rolled onto a number three, and I've also got this white clay, and this is rolled onto a number two, but that's for down the road and I've rolled some black clay out onto a number seven. Now zero is my thickest setting on my Atlas 150 and nine is the thinnest setting so this is quite thin. All right so that's the clay that you're going to need and I'm really hoping that I'm not going to forget anything today like I normally do. Um, I'm also going to be using these um, Makume Gani imprints from Ojoy Creations shop. You could also get these in Debbie's shop from Australia. I'm based in um, USA and Joy's based in USA. Debbie's based in Australia, but they do a lot of the same, you know, cutters and print, uh, imprints, etc. So I'll leave a link to both of their shops. And then obviously some cutters of your choice. I'm using these ones from Ojoy Creations. I might just do the two pendants on camera and do another one off camera we'll see how we get along um, and then you're going to need some alcohol inks and you're going to need quite a selection of colors now I'm using my Picasso ones linked in my Amazon storefront in the description as explained right at the start of this video where you can find the description um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up the colors into sections so I'm going to go with uh, the yellows and the oranges and I'm using lemon, sunset, marigold from the Picasso set and then the blues and the greens and I keep knocking them over the blues and the greens so um, wait let me think about this before I say it because yeah okay so manganese blue turquoise and did I want to put the sapphire in that no I don't think I did Sorry guys, I'm just looking back at my pictures because I tend to forget exactly what I did. But anyway, blues in another. Oh, that's right. The the um this bluey green is actually going to go in with the oranges. And then I've got um sapphire and violet, so purplish and a dark blue. And then a magenta and ruby. And I've also got two um alcohol ink mixatives. This one's pearl and this one's copper. Mixatives have the mica powder in them. So you need to give them a good shape before you start using them. And you will also need a heat gun, which I did forget to grab. I just remembered. And it fell on the floor. So you're also going to need a heat gun. And I did forget something else. What I did was I tidied everything away last night. And I meant to leave this out and I didn't. But you're going to need some copper leaf as well. Um, I think that's everything. Other than the basic tools. So let's go with the blues to start with. Now I want the blues to be more predominant. So I'm doing three blues. Two of the orange slash yellow slash a little bit of green and one each of the red and the purpley colours. Um, so that's how I'm doing it and I'm just going to move my clay around a little bit so I can actually see it a bit better. And I want to try and keep it in shot of the camera. You know, that's why I move my clay around. I mean, I don't want anyone to get upset, Diane. I'm pretty sure she must have needed to get her fainting couch out because I move my clay around too much apparently. Do you know, I've had some stonking comments this last week. I, I don't understand it, guys. I don't understand the need to be picky, spiteful, whatever. I'm over it. 
guys you can be spiteful one time after that you're just going to get blocked so you're wasting your breath anyway that's my little rant over let's start with the blues then so you are literally throwing alcohol ink at the clay it there's no specific strategy i'm just throwing that clay uh, that ink out at the clay so i'm just dropping it on there and then i'm going with this manganese blue next you're just throwing it on there and it's going to look like a big pool of mess before you know it but i want to get the clay fairly saturated with the ink i'm just going to move these out of the way um and then on these ones i'm also going to add um not the copper the whites the pearl white mica and i'm just looking at my pictures you see this is the thing guys I can sit down and make something and then within a few hours forget exactly what I did so I'm trying to be good and I'm taking pictures as I go along especially if it's going to be a tutorial and yet I'm looking at my pictures and I still can't quite work it out but I think that's right so you've got your blues and you've got this white pearl dropped on there as well and you just need to basically just throw the ink at it so that's the blues then we're going to do two squares now it's important that you do do this it's important if you want to get this same look you need to stick with the um, colors that I'm showing you in, in that ratio so three two and one of each of the purple and red um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of the video okay so this is the orangey yellowy greeny section so i'm dropping on some of this sunset first this is a little bit darker than the other yellows that i'm using although this is orange but you know what i mean and then i'm going to go with this lemon and i'm just going to drop that on boop 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 and then i'm going to put the lid back on she says and then I'm going to use this marigold which is sort of in between the two colors so again it's just randomly throwing the ink on there so you've got a nice puddle and it's very very wet and it's going to get extremely messy okay so on this one um, I'm just looking at my pictures again yeah I, I am adding some of the um, copper mixative give that a shake I'm not gonna overdo it with the copper but just a few drops on there like so and then I am gonna add some more of the pearl mixative as well into ooh, let me just get rid of that into this Oh, and I forgot the green, didn't I? So you do need to add a little bit of green. Now, the thing with this, guys, when it's dried off, you can see better how it's going to look. So you can always go back and add a little bit more colour if you want to. But yeah, they're the colours for that one. And then I'm going to do one of the red colours. Let me just move it up here. So I'm going to drop some of this ruby onto this one and a little bit of the magenta and I think we'll see but I think I might add a little bit of the magenta to the purple sections as well, uh, piece as well. And on this one, again, we need some of the copper. And did I put white on that one? I don't think I did. And I'm looking at this blue and I'm just going to add a little bit more of this white, pearl white. And 
And then the last piece is the kind of purpley colours. So let's go with the violets. Actually, I'm not going to use the sapphire. I've, cha I've changed my mind, guys. I was looking at the pictures again, and I don't think I used any because it's a little dark. So I'm just going to forget about that one. Um, and then on the purple one, I'm just going to add a little bit of that magenta as well because it is kind of purplish, a reddish purplish colour. What is up with these lids? And then again on the purples I'm gonna drop some more of that copper like so I'm not sure if I added the white but it's hard to tell on my pictures but I am gonna add some and I am gonna add some on the red as well so that's really it guys for the alcohol inks it's just throwing color at some clay I'm not doing it to make any specific pattern. I'm just doing it to get the colour that I want. Now the next thing, and this is where it gets messy, so I'm going to just clear my deck a little bit. We're going to get the heat gun and we're going to blow this ink around just to get the colours nicely mixed and also to help it dry as well. So get a heat gun. Don't hold it too close to the clay. You don't want to scorch it, but you're just moving that ink around and you're drying it off at the same time. It's going to get noisy guys, so if you want to turn down your volume, now is the time to do it. As you can see, it's going to blow off the edge of the clay, and this is why it gets messy. But I really want to cover that whole piece, and I want to get it fairly dry as well. So, like I said, this isn't about making any specific pattern, it's just about getting that um, colour dispersed. But looking at this, I feel like I need a little bit more of the white. So, this is what I mean you can just go back in and add colour as you see fit so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to go back and dry it off again I'm doing the same with this um, orangey red, not red, um, orange and yellow and green. And on this one, I feel like I need to add a little bit more of the green because that's kind of blended in a little too much. So I'm just going to go back in and add a little touch of green. Don't have to do a lot of green, but I do want a little bit. So I'm just doing that. So you can just keep going back, guys, until you're happy. And then the reds. And on this one, I am going to add just a drop more of the violet, just a little bit, not too much, just a couple of drops. Yeah, and I don't feel like that's purple enough, so I am going to throw in some more of the magenta as well. So this is all just about playing around with colour and, you know, until you're happy with it. Yeah. 
All right, so I've dried it off a little bit, but I'm just going to clean up the mess and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to dry it a little bit more because I do want this clay to get some crackle in it. All right, so I'm just going to um, clear this away, clean up the ink and everything and I'll be back. All right, those, so these are mainly dry, but I'm going to get the heat gun again and I'm going to go over each piece to basically partially bake the clay because I want it to be dry and crackled. All right, so I'm just grabbing my heat gun again, which has got tangled in with my wires. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so noise again, guys. So when you're doing this, you just want to keep going over the piece a few times, but keep moving it in a circular motion and don't get it too close to the clay. And you don't need to do it for too long. We'll do this and then we'll um, go in and check whether it's crackled enough or not. Alright, so I've done that and just in case somebody asks, my heat gun is literally on and off. There's no settings, there's just the one heat setting on mine. So I would, if you've got um, a heat gun with several settings, I'd say keep it on the lower end. Alright, so let's take one of these pieces and let's just see if it's starting to dry out enough. And I think it is, look, you can see it breaking. So I think that's probably as far as I need to go. I'll just check a different colour. Yeah, I think that's good, guys. All right. So that's that. And now we just need to add a little bit of copper leaf. I'm not putting it on all of the colours, and it doesn't really matter which ones you put it on, to be fair. Heads up, it's going to resist sticking because it's going on top of alcohol ink. But I promise you that it will come together. So don't panic. Um, let's put a little bit on that blue one. Yeah, like I say, it is going to resist sticking on that alcohol ink, but I'm not adding any liquid clay, so you're just going to have to work with it until it comes together, and it will. I've made this, like, plenty of times, and um, it's always been fine. And that's another thing, guys, just based on one of the other comments that I got. If I am showing you something on camera, it's because I know it's safe and okay to do so. I would never, ever show you a technique um, that you shouldn't do, if that makes sense. I'm not talking about me me and my little screw-ups. That's, that's always going to happen. I'm talking about... Um, how can I explain it without going into the comment that that she left? I'm just saying, if I'm showing you something, it's because it's okay to do it. If that makes sense. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm just rambling. <laughs> okay, so I've got a little bit of the the copper leaf on there and now I'm just going to start stacking and I'm just thinking which way I want to do this I'm just going to pop that one on there and there isn't any particular order in which to stack them as long as you don't stack two of the same colors together I'm just going to pop that on there 
and I'm going to pop that one on here and I'm going to put the purple one there the green one there and this is really being naughty doesn't want to stick at all so I'm hoping for the best on that one I'm just going to mush it down okay I'm just going to get my blade lift this up wipe this down a little bit Give it a dry, bring back my little stack and let's just um, give it a gentle squeeze and you can see how the heat gun has partially baked the clay but it's not fully baked guys, you saw I didn't do it for very long on each square. You don't want to overdo it, you still want some um, flexibility in the clay so you can still you know, play around with it. If you're a bit nervous about using the heat gun and scared that you're going to overcook the clay, just, you know, do 10 or 15 seconds at, at a time and then check it. And then what I'm going to do is, once I've got this all nicely stuck together, is get my roller and just roll it out a little bit. And you can see now this piece isn't going to show the crackle per se but there's a reason why I wanted it to crackle um, you'll see all right so just roll it out a little bit because this has got to go back through the pasta machine machine so roll it out thin enough that it's going to um, go back through the machine but before I do that I'm just going to add this um, black clay that I showed you at the beginning this is rolled out onto a number seven nine being the thinnest setting so I'm just putting that on the top get rid of the excess get rid of that hair oh two hairs oh no it's just yep no two hairs two of my hairs And then I'm going to flip it back on so the black side is facing up. Give it another quick roll just so it's nicely stuck down. And I am going to cut in half and restack it. But before I do that, I am just going to add a little bit more of the copper leaf onto the black. And I'm going to take my fingers off because I'm finding it hard to work with my fingers off I'm gonna take my fingers off <laughs> I'm gonna take my gloves off oh dear did I say fingers I'm pretty sure I did I'm pretty sure I said I'm gonna take my fingers off uh, that wouldn't be um, very good for me seeing as I do this <laughs> might make some people happy of course they won't have, to, won't have to see me moving my hands around so much. <laughs> uh, I do like getting my little digs in. I can't help it. All right. So uh, I've cut it in half. I've added the copper leaf. And I'm just going to plop the other piece on top. Like so. She says as it sticks to her fingers. And clean up again. dry off okay so we've got our little stack okay I'm just going to give it a little bit of a press now you can see it just looks like a jumble of colors in there that's what you want I'm not creating a pattern per se I'm going to give this another roll because this needs to go back through on the pasta machine and I'm going to put it through on the thickest setting, which is zero on mine. 
don't worry about that it will all come together you know sometimes when I'm playing with clay and I'm like oh no oh no that's gonna go all wrong but you know what guys don't worry about a thing cuz every little thing is gonna be alright and that's what I have to sing to myself because you know what it's just clay Okay, so I'm just going to run this through my pasta machine, like I said, on the thickest setting, which on my Atlas 150 is a zero. I'm just going to pass it through like so. And this is what it's going to look like when it comes back through. It looks a bit like a hot mess, actually. But that's what you want to get that look that I'm going for. That's why I dried the clay. It, it's got to look kind of fabric-y. I can't really explain it any other way, but that's what you need to do to get this look. And also you need a longer strip like this because I'm going to be using three of these Makume Gani imprints. I'm just going to give it a gentle roll so it's stuck to the tile. Now bear in mind guys that this is now quite a thin strip. It's not a typical Makume Gane where you've got the block and you push you push things in to make your patterns. It's I've you know, I've rolled it out. It's fairly thin. So at this point you're going to need your white clay as well because this is backing clay. Um and I found that the best thing to do for this so it's easy for, to work, for you to work out the placement of the pieces is just to um, cut the clay into sections that's going to accommodate your cutter sizes. So I'm basically doing one pendant at a time. Um, I was going to do this one, but I think I'm just going to stick with these two because I haven't rolled out enough clay and I don't feel like doing it now. So I'm going to show you two. So I've got the white clay ready for that. I will show you some other pieces at the end. Right, so I'm just making some room and I'm going to get my MG imprints and I'm going to give them a little wipe down with a wet wipe just to dampen them so the clay doesn't get stuck in there. Just acts as a bit of a release. All right, and I'm going to push in, obviously. I want a good impression but I don't want to go so deep that it cuts right through to the bottom because like I said this is not a thick stack but you do want a good impression so I'm just giving it a bit of a wobble here and there and that's good and a little bit of clay did come out which is unfortunate and let me just see if I can salvage that I probably pressed too hard to be fair because um like I say, I've made these several times. That's not happened before. So I think that's my bad. But I'm not too concerned. So that's that one. And now this one. Now, I don't know what the specific names of these are, guys, but you'll see them in Ojoy Creations shop under um, Makume Gane imprints and also any any of the ones that I use will be in as seen on Clay Boutique so you could probably just try there first and if I've used it you'll see it it will be on there okay hopefully this won't do the same thing and pull up the clay that's good that's a good one and then this one and that's good have I got enough room to do another one of these I think I do so just in case that one doesn't work out too well because of how I pulled some of the clay up. Um, I'm just going to do another one, I think. I think I've just got just about enough clay left to fit it on there. Okay, that's better. Alright, so when you've done that, 
this is where you're going to need a sharp flexible blade and you're going to take very very thin slices to the point where it is going to come apart like this but you don't particularly want big full slices you you want fragments now that didn't work out that great I've got to be honest <laughs> oh dear I'll try again and it is tricky because you have partially baked that clay so it is going to be a little crumbly but this one's a little better okay so you get in pieces like this and like I say it is gonna break and here's tipsy again I know I'm just gonna get rid of that one I don't like the look of it it looks a bit gnarly let's try this one instead so you are cutting fairly thin and don't forget it is a thin stack as is so you need to try and get as thin as you can and like I say you don't necessarily have to get full pieces just little fragments looks the best for this technique and it does look kind of messy but trust me it will all come out great hmm those some of those pieces are actually still quite nice to be fair so I'm just going to push that back down it is awkward it is messy the clay is crumbly but um, it's what you've got to do to get that look so you're just going to have to work with it be patient with it be gentle with it and it will look good I'm just getting some of these and it does look kind of blurry if that makes sense because of the cr uh, the crackle because um, of how the alcohol ink got dispersed as I was rolling through it now the other thing you can do is just take some of these bits that haven't been stamped because it still gives a, a cool fragmented look see you're still getting some cool pieces so you can use the whole thing up if you want to it's not going to go to waste I just want to remove that little bit of black on that that piece so you know you just keep doing that guys just keep shaving off fragments to get your little pieces all right this next one Actually, I'm going to bring this over because I'm having a hard time seeing it from here now. And it is extremely, extremely fragile. So I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. I'll just have to cope. I'll just have to manage. This is really breaking up now. So what I'm going to do is just get, see it's not sticking to the tile now, that's the problem. Oops! I'm just going to take some of that off there. And some of this side bit off. And I'm just going to try and save this. Break that bit off, so at least we've got somewhat of a flower pattern. And I don't know if I dare mess with this now because I moved it and I shouldn't have done. We'll see what we can get. Okay, I think that'll be good. Oh my goodness. It's very hard work trying to do something from here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to scrap that, guys, because I moved it and it just got too broken. All right, so, yeah, you can see it can be a bit tricky. But we've got some nice little fragments here, so I'm just going to take my first piece of white clay. 
and I'm going to go with this fuller piece just because I think it looks really cool and I'm just literally going to place it on my clay as gently as I can and I think I'm going to be going with this cutter for this one now you can see there's gaps in there with, with the white clay showing through that's exactly what you want guys you want some of the white to show through you want it to look fragmented and then I'm going to try and find another piece that I like to go with this and I'm just going to pop it there but I'm not going to pop it right next to the other piece I still want that little bit of white showing through okay like so actually yeah I'm just, I was just checking to see which cutter I wanted to use I'm not going to fit both on so I think I am actually going to go with this one I think I think all right so that's the first first piece and it's going to be with that one but I'm just going to put it to the side for a moment while I work on the next one okay try and get this I don't want all that black though so I'm just going to take a little bit of that away and pop that there like that um, <laughs> let's go with just one of those shaved edges that I did and pop that there and again I'm leaving the white space and let's go with this little broken spiral piece I think that would look pretty neat make sure it's the right way around like I say guys you're cutting it so thin it's just mega th fragile that and the fact that it's partially baked so you know you just got to be slow with it really let me see how that's going to look I don't think I want to use that cutter I've changed my mind I think I'm just going to go with a round one yeah that's, I think I'll just go with a round one without the cutout center in it um, these come in a whole set of cutters listed in my Amazon storefront again right what else do we have let's go with this bit and just break that little piece off and put that there now that doesn't look right there I'm not sure that's going to come back off now okay I'm just going to put that there then it's fine let me see that should look okay um, do you know what I am going to do another one so I just need to roll out a little bit more clay because I didn't quite have enough for a third one so just give me a second just need to roll some clay out guys and again I'm rolling it onto a number two now if you like thicker um, pendants make them thicker but I prefer to do them a little bit thinner especially when I'm going to be adding resin because that builds up the depth the thickness anyway so I've got myself a little bit more white clay and I am going to use some more of these pieces because some of them look so scrumilicious so I'm going to pop that there I'm going to get this bit because I think this looks pretty cool that's just a, a bit that I took off from the side that didn't have any pattern in it I just I just really like it what did I say I was doing guys <laughs> oh dear let me just <laughs> oh my gosh I'm just going to see what I, actually I might change which cutter I'm using with, with which piece so yeah it's just about playing around and um, 
put in pieces where you want them. I'm just going to remove a little bit of that black and I'm going to put that there. And I think that'll do. Okay, right. I'm just going to go and clear away some of this mess, some of these pieces, and I'll be back. All right, guys, so I've cleaned everything away and I've decided which cutter I want to go with, which, you know, layout, so to speak. So I am going to do three. Um, I, I have made other pieces, so I will show you those at the end. But before I do any cutting, I just need to give these a, a really good burnish. So I'm using my steel soap for that. Again, that's listed in my Amazon storefront. Link in the description. And I'm just going to give this a jolly good burnish. Because I want all those pieces that are on there to be nice and flush on the clay. And this helps just to smooth it out you can be quite brutal with this you don't have to be you know like this you can give it a really good rub rub a dub dub like so and I just periodically like to check and I think that's actually good so that's that one I need some clean paper so that's that one and then obviously this this one um, needs a good burnish too but not least I think I'm I don't know about this one actually I think I'm just gonna forget about those little pieces there and just go with there on that one enough all right so that's what they look like and that's what they look like pre-bake um, obviously I've not cut them out yet so that's what I'm going to do now so I am going to go with this um, triangle one here I think like that Take away the excess and just, so that's that one and I think that's looking stupendous. Okay, right, now this is the one where I'm not sure what to do because of how I placed it. It's not that brilliant of a placement to be honest, um, but I can probably make it work and go so I am missing some of it off, but I guess I could get a little something out of this one here. I'm just going to cut that bit away. I could probably use that, I don't know. Right, so this one, wait a minute. Hmm. We'll see how that one turns out. I'm not worried about what the backs look like because I will resin and glitter them and I will show you, I will share a link to my video where I show you how to do that. So there's that one and actually I think that looks pretty nice. So there's that one. And then the last one. Do I want to go with, no I don't want to go with that. I'm going to go with this one I think. And again that's going to lose some of that but I can definitely use that piece in something. Blade right way up, Deb. 
that can definitely be used for something so I'll put that over there and I'm just gonna do that on this one so that's that one all right so I'm going to go and bake these I'm going to bake them on 275 because it's primo and I'll be back all right guys I baked them I baked them for 45 minutes actually because they were you know on a setting number two I usually bake 45 minutes to an hour um, the round one that I did is still under the UV lamp, so I'm not actually going to show you that one, but I will show you the other two that I did. So there's the heart one. Now, heads up, when you take these out of the oven, you might think to yourself, ugh, they look a bit kind of muddy looking, a bit dull. But the resin changes that, so don't panic. So there's the heart. I haven't finished them, and I, like I said, I probably will resin the backs with glitter. And I'll leave a link for my video for that. And there's the other one that I did. And you can see it almost looks like a brocade, which is why I went with the name that Mindy picked. Now, they're those ones. I just want to show you my original ones. They The colour looks a little different. You're never going to get exactly the same. I use the same colours, but it all depends on where you stack them, how much of each colour you use. Um, they're always going to vary a little bit, but those are from today. And these are my original ones that I did. And looking at this, it looks like I probably added a little more green. So they do look a little different. And there's a round one. I absolutely love these. I really do. And there's another one. So just for comparison with the two similar, sh the two same shapes, the colours are a little different. And then, oh, I got a little bit of something on that one. Let's give it a quick rub. And then this one as well that I did. So they're from my original batch. Now I'm going to be transparent with you. I actually, this was actually take two of this tutorial. I did one yesterday. I did it exactly the same way, but I made the mistake, not even a mistake, but I wanted to try and get closer to the original batch as I could. And what I did with this one, even though I had my pictures right in front of me, for some reason, I added two squares of purple and two squares of red. So obviously the colour again is different on these ones and I didn't want to show that video. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to show you closer to the original as I could possibly get. You're never going to do it. But this, this was when um, I added too much, two squares of red and two squares of purple. Um, I basically did two colours of each of the colours that I showed you instead of doing three blues and one red and one purple, etc. So that's how they came out. The purple and the red, well, mainly the red, kindly overtook them. But they still look cool. So they're the red ones, nice for Valentine's Day. I mean, you can see a little bit of green showing through on that one and obviously the black and there's a little speck of blue up there. But like I say, the reds kind of overtook. So that's those. So you can really see, depending on which colours you use, how much of each colour you use, etc., that you're going to get somewhat of a different look. Oh, and I forgot to show you the little earrings that I made from my original batch as well. Again, I haven't finished any of these pieces. I'm terrible for making pieces and then moving on to the next thing before I finish them because I've always got a head full of ideas for my next tutorial. All right, so that's those, but I'm just going to leave these ones out because they're from today. And I just want to show you one more thing. Exactly the same technique, the same colours as I used today, but instead of making the Makume stack out of translucent, I made it out of white and then laid it on white and you get a completely different look and I still think they look really cool so you know it's all on what you you prefer but they're the ones that were made with a white stack instead of translucent same colors and then laid on white completely different so I just wanted to show you the differences guys so you've got a couple of options there but these are the ones from today 
ignore the back. <laughs> Alright guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later. Bye.